Yeah, so when it comes to this particular class, I like to keep it as accessible as possible. So if you read my email that I sent out, uh, that one actually has a link to a YouTube channel that I will be posting the videos, recordings of this to. Um, also the notes that I take in class, I don't do them on the board, I do them on this notepad because that way I can scan them. I can scan those, put them up online. So if you are working on your own, you get a little lost, um, you can actually just pop online, look at the work, get the work that actually got done, look at the actual YouTube video, however you really wanna do it. So I like to try to make sure everything's available at any given time. Um, so, you know, I got them. I, I like to throw memes in this. I didn't, uh, I didn't refresh my memes this particular uh, class for any repeats, I apologize. <laughs> because, uh, well, honestly, I was hurting on time. And I had to reorganize a bunch of stuff. So, you know, whatever. Personally, I'm trying to write a sugar high right now. I got up about 14-ish hours ago. I've had two hours of sleep. Let's teach some math for a couple hours. We're doing this. Right there with you. Woo! Have fun. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. All right. So give you the general idea of the class before we get started in the actual, you know, math stuff. Um, so me, I'm Ben Wassum, friends with Awesome. I hate, I hate getting called Mr. Wassum. Call me Ben, I exist. I don't like Benjamin either, I don't like Benji. I got, I, I apparently was called Benji up until like kindergarten and my first day of school, the teacher asked me why I wanted to be called. I said, Ben, apparently nobody had ever called me that. So that's what I'm rolling with. Um, I got an associates in math here. I believe I was actually one of the last people to get it as an associates of science before that switched to the arts. I have no idea why math is in the arts right now. No freaking idea at all, whatever. It's art. That doesn't make any sense. No, not at all. No, it drives me nuts. Um, and I actually care about you learning. So I have had too many crappy teachers. Um, I always think of my high school chemistry teacher, cheated my way through high school chemistry, not gonna lie. Uh, he just sat at the front of the class reading a newspaper and I didn't even know what the heck was going on. I, you know, I was just kind of there. How did I do the, not pull through the test? Me and some buddies photocopied the entire book and sat next to each other. Uh, it was an open note thing. If I photocopied the entire book, it's in my notes. Um, <laughs> a little cheap. You got a hand. Are we are we raising it? So does that mean you're an art teacher? Oh God, that's the most painful thing you could have ever said. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I'm going to die now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> if I was an art teacher, it would be bad. I have I'm good with structure. I'm good with Formal writing, I'm good with math. I took a creative writing class. It was very similar to uh, when you are passing a wreck on the road and you slow down to look. It's kind of like that. Um, <laughs> it was real bad, real bad. Oh, <laughs> I'm not a writer, I am not an artist. Um, yeah, so uh, when it comes to this class, I respect the hell out of all of you because I mean, you know, usually in the college class, people are spending hundreds of dollars to go and sit. That's the main reason they're paying attention. You guys are actually trying to better yourselves. Um, and it's math, and I'm sure all of you hate it. Um, I love math. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm cool with that. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, but... Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm tired of bad teachers, so um, I like to, you know, not skip steps like every math teacher ever made me angry. 
Uh, I like to explain things as much as I can. Um, I am fully aware of the fact that uh, when you're learning something new, all the stuff you'd learned like the week before is just mush in the back of your brain and it's not there anymore. So I explain everything the whole way through. As you can see on there, I've actually been tutoring at WNC since 2008. Um, yeah, you, there used to be an academic skills center on campus. I was lead tutor of that. So uh, I am awkward and weird, and I'm the guy you want to learn from math from, apparently. <laughs> so about as weird of a human being as you get. I'm debatable on the human being part at this point, honestly. I don't even know. All right. So expectations. Please show up on time. I really feel like I should have put that on the first one. Please show up on time. That doesn't happen, but please. I'd appreciate it. I kind of hate having to start class a couple minutes late. Happens every time. Uh, we, you know, when it comes down to it, it's two and a half hours. So five hours a week, eight weeks, that's 40 hours total. Hey! Hey! Welcome to the party. <laughs> oh, they missed the first part. That's okay. He got it last time. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen you in two whole weeks. Exactly. I know you missed me. All right. So yeah, show up on time. Um, <laughs> when it comes to this class, I am not going to lie. A lot of you are going to kind of fall behind, get lost. Um, Many of you will have the incredible urge to just not show up. You're going to skip one, then you're just going to skip two, and then you're going to say, well, I skipped the last couple. I'm probably too far behind. And by the end of uh, most of my classes, I have two or three of you left. Um, in fact, uh, the last one was two. Um, <laughs> two people in the last week last time. Um, it kind of moves fast. Uh, I mean, keep in mind, this is like we're starting from the basic, basic stuff, and we are moving as far up as we can with, you know, everything. So it's going to seem a little, a little too basic for some of you at the, on day one, maybe day two, um, but it'll ramp up and we'll have fun with it. Um, communication, please send me an email if you're going to miss class or if you're having issues with anything. Um, I have been teaching this class for probably two years now, two, two and a half, something like that. Um, I can count the amount of emails I've gotten from students uh, asking for help on one hand. Uh, so yeah, seriously, if you have trouble with any of this math, you know, and you, you know, a lot of people don't like it, uh, raising their hand in the middle of class. Feels awkward. You're like, oh God, I feel like I'm the idiot. No, all of all of you have the same questions in your head. That everybody, if you ask the question, everybody else is going to be like, oh, thank God, I don't have to be the one to ask that. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, send me an email about it. You know, bring it up in class or something in some way. Um, we'll work on it. We'll figure it out. You know, if, if you got a you got a problem, we're gonna fix it. Um, on Zoom, none of you are gonna listen to this for the most part, but cameras on and pay attention. Uh, the cameras on is largely just so I can have people pay attention. Um, I have watched somebody do an entire load of laundry before from across their room. They were absolutely not aware that. You know, uh, and, you know, attendance is actually dependent on that. Um, with the Excel program, you're counted for hours. So all of your time in this class is counted for those hours. Um, if I see somebody is very clearly like not there, uh, I'm just not going to write it down. So such is life. Um, now, the first bullet point that I completely skipped over is uh, homework stuff, essential education. Uh, so when you signed up for Excel, you were given a form that you may or may not have completely forgotten about by now. 
uh, you would have written down a username and password, probably your email address and some random password. Um, that is for the Essential Education website. Uh, it's actually a very useful website. The lessons on there like literally start at the beginning and cover every single topic that not just we're going to cover, but past where we're going to cover. It's the same password that we used last time? Or? Yeah, yeah. Your, your login hasn't changed. Um, now, the, the nice thing is that the lessons are honestly like five minutes long. The videos are short. They're like stupid short. So if you're confused by something, check that website out. See if that their short video is going to work out real nice. Um, try to get at least two hours a week minimum on there because essential education also counts for your hours in the program. So I, you know, I've considered assigning homework and going home and grading it, but one, it takes absolutely forever. Two, I have a full-time job outside of this. And three, I, I'm not able to record your hours for that. And I want you guys to get credit for this. Um, the lessons are pretty short. The problems are pretty short. They're thrown to you with multiple choice answers. Um, so seriously, go on there, check it out. If you don't have your login, check with the office, shoot me an email, um, whatever you got to do, or, you know, we'll, we'll pull it off. Um, I have a lot of stuff on essential education because I really want people to use it. It, it really is a, an excellent, an excellent website, actually. Um, I've actually, uh, for some of the slides I've going in and uh, we're not gonna use the word plagiarized. We're not gonna use that, but I've 100% uh, adopted some of their wording for class materials. <clears throat> uh, yeah, no, if you Google most of these subjects, you're going to find a lot of very similar wording very quickly. Um, I may or may not have copy pasted everything off of like the front page of like the Google search results. I got, I ended up with like five or six, like, you know, go to websites that have excellent instructions on things, but essential education is kind of one of them. Um, yeah, so like I have written here, hours worked on essential education lessons count for you just as much as the hours logged from attendance in class. Um, there is, there's no difference. You go to class for two and a half hours, cool. You sit on that website and do lessons for two and a half hours. Also cool. Going to get up, work for you the same way. As I have down there, if you can check it out this week, um, whether you feel like you need the help yet or not, check it out this week, do a couple lessons, see if it's working. If you can't get in, bug somebody, we'll get you in. Um, the main thing, um, is that if you notice on the email I sent out, there was also a link to Essential Education um, because you cannot go directly to essentialed.com. It is horribly annoying. For some reason, there on that website, every college gets their own little subdomain. So the main page for them has a different login than the WNC login, and every single other college that has that, that's on there has a different login. So you specifically have to go to app.essentialed.com slash start slash WNC, which is annoying and stupid. So I put it in the email. Um, I believe I also have it set up as a link on my YouTube channel. So you can always click on that and go straight into it. Um, but yeah, that's the main thing. So if you try your username and password on essentialed.com and it doesn't work, it might be that you're using a, lo a wrong login page. Is your YouTube channel under your actual name? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> then, probably. I think it's uh, Ben Blossom's Excel class uploads, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not... Uh, if you can't tell, I am not the most social human being. So the whole like YouTube uploads and general human interaction, not my first, you know, skill. But your forte. Yeah, 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 I'm kind of human. Um, yeah, so the 
it exists. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Now, I do have a note on the essential. Yes, I have a lot of slides on essential education. I do. I'm really trying to get people to use it. I usually have like one or two students that touch it. As it, please be my best class. I believe in all of you. You guys got this. So what I have on here, most people don't make the, make the mistake of not doing the homework for the class. Um, if you do that, it will have consequences. When you reach enough hours in the program, you get a post assessment. If you are not like actively trying to learn this stuff, writing it down, working on it, um, it's not going to click. And if it doesn't click, then you know the skills aren't there. And that's what we're after. We're after building those skills. So just try to get that. And also, you know, if you do a couple hours of essential ed here and there that'll actually get you to the amount of hours you would need for a post-assessment by the end of this class. Because otherwise, I believe it's what, 60 hours you need for a post-assessment? Assuming that I'm not horribly ill at some point and that I never let you guys out early, we could max out at 40. That's it. So you gotta find a way to stretch to that other extra 20 hours. So class structure. Usually what I do is that we start off with a review of the previous class. That way you guys see things more than once. Um, it's not just here's a lesson, okay, bye. Here's a lesson, okay, bye. If you skip a, if, if you skip a day, you can come in and if you, as long as you're, you're here on time, you can still kind of get the gist of what it is uh, that we covered the previous class. Um, so that way, you know, it gives you another opportunity to, you know, stay caught up. Um, and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take those reviews and I'll use them as opportunities to kind of build on what I covered the previous time. So it might be a little bit different. It might have some more concepts, that sort of thing. So it's not quite just a rehash. Though I'm not going to lie, sometimes it's going to be a rehash. It's how it goes. Um, so every topic that we cover is going to have explanations of slides. Um, some people like to take pictures. Some people like to just click on the slideshow on their phone. That's cool. Um, some people write things down. You know, you have a lot of different options for taking notes. Um, I will always have some examples that will work together on you know, what do I call this? This is a document camera. I want to call it an overhead because that's what I dealt with when I was in school. Um, but we'll work together on some pro problems there. And then afterwards, um, I tried to do a bunch of problems in class that you guys will be working on in here. That way, if you think you have the idea and it turns out that you don't, you can ask the question and get it cleared up. So it is recommended that you have some kind of calculator and you 100% will need something to write on and something to write with. I don't care if it's pen, I don't care if it's pencil, I don't care if it's the back of a napkin or an expensive notebook. Just, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I, you know, when I was working retail and I would have friends ask me, like they'd be in like a calculus class or something and be like, oh my God, I can't do this, can you help me? Yeah, it's dead in here. Push the receipt tape button and do calculus on the back of a freaking receipt. <laughs> Just send them a picture and be like, "This, do this. Um, you use what you got to use. Whatever doesn't doesn't have to be doesn't have to be fancy." Um, now, I wrote that last one, kind of ignoring that I already had this particular one. Um, the main thing to note here is that if you don't have a calculator, that is like the standard for testing calculators is a TI-30XS. Um, that's actually what they have in the office for if you take, uh, when you take the, the high set or the GED tests um, or even the, um, the assessments, um, that is the type of calculator that you'd be using. 
as such. I bought one for myself this semester. Not, I'm not going to be able to immediately check my answers. I just realized that. Cool. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm going to be I'm going to be dealing with the same stuff you guys will be dealing with. Um, otherwise, pretty much any scientific calculator will do. Um, and by scientific, I mean slightly more complicated than having a little 10 key and a couple of pluses and minuses. Da -da. And then, yeah, if you don't have the email that I sent out, um, let me know. Um, shoot me an email to this email address, benjamin.wassum at wnc.edu. Um, and then I'll just reply to it with the forward of the thing that I already sent. And that'll work. That way you know where it is. Okay. So now I've been rambling for 20 minutes. Are we excited for math? Are we excited for math? Okay. Well, we're going to start with the very, very basics today. Like, I'm not even kidding. I got addition and subtraction on this sucker. Like, we're going to, we're going to have some, some fun with it. Yeah. Uh, we are going to start off with essentially my least favorite thing um, because I personally have a god awful memory, just absolutely terrible memory. Um, and that's the real number system. Now, the real number system is as close as I get to whining about vocab in this class. Um, so the idea is that. It's essentially giving categories for all the different types of numbers there are. You know, like if you go back in, in human civilization, there are some civilizations that didn't have a concept of the number zero. There are some that didn't have concepts of negative numbers. So all of those are essentially subsets of the real number system at this point. Real number system, you have natural numbers, and natural numbers are, you know, what you'd be counting with one, two, three, four, five. Whole numbers adds the zero to that. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Integers, which is uh, the term I'd be referring to the most often, that one is all the counting numbers with negatives. Um, and rational numbers is defined as any number that can be represented by a ratio. That one's a little tricky. Uh, think of a ratio as a fraction, first of all. Um, so any any like basic fraction, one fourth, one half, could be five hundred thirty two out of ten thousand seventy eight. That's still a rational number. I don't care how big it gets. If it's in a fraction, it's a rational number. Whoop de do. Um, you also get specifically funky ones like um, you start dealing with decimals and they end at a certain point, like. I have negative 2.65 right there. That can be represented as negative 265 hundredths, because you know, it goes out to the hundredths place. Um, so it can it can go a lot of different ways. Um, now that also includes, I don't think I have it on there, but it might be on the next slide. Um, that also includes the idea of uh you know, the problem with trains of thought is that they derail. <laughs> um, that includes the idea of uh, repeating decimals. Repeating decimals also count. So if you have like 3.33333 forever and ever and ever and ever, that's, that's a third, you know. Um, you divide by an odd number, you get something that's going to repeat forever usually. Um, so anything that's repeating or repeating a sequence, that's a rational number. Irrational numbers include non-terminating, non-repeating decimals and roots that are not perfect squares. Um, basically just funky stuff where if you punch it in a calculator, you get a big old pile of ugly. Um, that's generally what irrational numbers would be. And then we have the number pi. Pi is a funky looking number. It is literally just something that goes on forever. It's irrational, but it's a number. It exists, right? So it's a real number. So easier way to look at this is 
whoop de doo we have a giant Venn diagram. So you can see that we separate out rational and irrational. So irrational is the funky stuff. Uh, rational can be the funky stuff. If you have like the square root of four in there, you can break that down to a two and it's still rational at that point. So if it's something that can simplify nicely um, into a rational number, it's still a rational number. Um, so from the inside out, you have natural numbers that are counting numbers, whole numbers add zero, integers adds negatives, rational adds fractions and uh, repeating or terminating decimal points. And then irrational is just stuff that sucks. Is that a good way to look at it? I think that's a good way to look at it. I like it. So don't have too many uh, examples on this particular concept. Uh, I figure that these ones, we don't even really need to write down, right? I don't, I don't need to, I, I don't wanna draw that out. I really don't. Um, so I put the, the whole Venn diagram on this slide. So we're stating which subsets of real numbers each number corresponds to. So number one, we have the number 15. Now, to be able to say what number set something belongs to, it's easier to think of it as starting from the inside and working your way out. So you go as far inside as you can and hit the first one that it would actually count as, which would be the natural numbers, right? Because that doesn't, it doesn't include zero, it doesn't include negatives, but we don't have a zero or a negative. We have a 15, so it would fit in there, right? And since it fits into the furthest inside set, it'll fit for everything outside of that. You know, 15 is still in the whole numbers because it's zero, one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it still fits into integers, negative this, negative that, zero, one, two, three, four, et cetera. Um, and rational, yeah, I could put 15 over one. It's a ratio, there we go, it's a fraction. Um, so since it counts as a natural number, it'll work for everything on its way out that way. Now with number two, we have negative 20. Well, the first one that actually counts for negatives would be integers, right? So that's the furthest inside you can go. The whole numbers doesn't count, natural numbers doesn't count. Um, so integers, it'll count as, and as such, it's a rational number. And then number three, we have eight over 16. Whenever I have a little slash like that, I'm trying to draw a fraction, but you know, Typing a fraction nicely into a PowerPoint presentation, not cool. Don't like it, haven't found a nice way to do it. If you can enlighten me, let me know, I'm cool with that. But uh, I Googled it once and I didn't care enough. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, you can, you can see what I'm doing there. Um, so eight over 16, that'll reduce if you want to. Um, but if you don't know that, either way, it is a fraction and a fraction literally is a rational number because it's a ratio. Um, now, since it can reduce, you would usually try to see if you can break it down a little bit. Um, eight over 16 isn't gonna help you a whole lot because it'd break down to one half. But if you had something like 16 over eight, then you could divide it out, say, yay, we got a two and then go all the way into the natural numbers and say, cool, works for that. So you'd just be able to simplify it and it would actually be uh, part of the other sets, okay? Yeah. So uh, now we got these next three. I'm gonna give you some, a moment to ponder it. Quite literally just, you know, a moment. Um, then, uh, yeah, then I will ask you what you guys think of them. I usually just lecture, so this is like a, this is new to me. I'm not gonna lie. Stare at it, believe in it, be one with it, understand. Look at the zero. How far in does the zero go? Look at the square root of four. How far in does that go? 
Do you have a math teacher that likes trick questions? This is a question you must ask yourself. Do I like experimenting on students? This is also a question you must ask yourself. Do I like any of the Jeopardy song, a song, you know? Just, I might do that, just have like a button for it. Interesting though, sure. Right? <laughs> I, I, I did at one point try out a laugh track. It didn't work out well. <laughs> it did. You know, it's awkward is all the laugh tracks that you see in sitcoms and stuff that are usually recorded in like the 40s. So half of them are dead. <laughs> it's kind of messed up to think about, but you know what? At least somebody was laughing at friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> why is it funny that this guy's going to kill someone over a sandwich um, because he was hungry <laughs> don't mess with my food me too honestly <laughs> um, they brought back their pretzel pizza at Little Caesars it's the greatest thing on the planet right oh man I could kill one of those right now um Literally, it's one of the best things I've ever had in my life. No, uh -huh. no. Here's a good idea. Nacho cheese on a pizza. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Make the crust extra salty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kosher salt on the pretzel crust. <clears throat> it is crack. If it was, <laughs> I might, I might die. Every, if they decide to bring it back permanently, I might, I might die. I'm right. right there with you. Yeah, death. All right. <laughs> so I've rambled long enough. How do we feel about these numbers? Are we, what? What? Are, where's? Where's zero? Where? Where's zero? Whole numbers. Yeah. What else? Ah, remember, you can work your way out. You look at the furthest in it goes, and you're like, okay, yeah, whole numbers. Would, would zero be an irrational number? It would not. It would not. Because we got, uh, okay, where's that little annotate thing so you can see where my mouse is? Uh, spotlight. So we got the zero here, like that. Uh, so if it's over here, it ain't over here. So what you do is you look at the furthest inside it goes, and you're like, okay, well, where's this circle right now? Oh, it's inside of? integers, which is inside of rational numbers. So you go to the first one it hits and then say, okay, it's a whole number and this and that. Yeah. So you just work your way out and say, yeah, it's all of those. All right, now what about, what about Mr. This is a square root of four. Anybody's, I don't know how familiar everybody is with square roots. Uh, I've looked at all your assessments. It is all over the place. That is why I'm starting at the beginning some of you are going to be like, okay, cool. Some of you are going to be like, what the hell is happening? Um, <laughs> wouldn't it be a natural number? You are correct, sir. You are correct. And of course, a whole number, an integer, and a rational number. So it works its way out. Now, that is something that you're going to have to keep in mind uh, on, say, test problems dealing with this. Now, I can't imagine you would see more than one problem on something like that. But uh, if you look at something and you're like, okay, it's a natural number. You have to be able to say it's also a whole number. It's also an integer. It's also a rational number. You have to have all of those boxes ticked. Um, why is this a natural number? Because the square root of four square roots are, hey, what squared is this number? So what squared is four? What multiplied by itself is four? It's two times two, so the square root of four is a two, which means that sucker is just, eh, it's a weird looking two. And a weird looking two is still a two. So it's still a natural number, which is a whole, which is an integer, which is a rational. Eight over 17. That's irrational. It's an irrational number. Well, what does irrational mean? It means it's not a ratio. 
but is it a ratio? We have an eight over 17, that is a ratio. That is a fraction. Fractions are ratios. They're just, you know, terminology and math is all over the place. Things are literally named after what they are or what weird uh, Greek guy decided to make it up. It's not even made up. It's just, oh yeah, this works this way. Okay, cool, I'm gonna write this down. Welcome to the party. Sorry, I'm late. I'll survive. There is a sign-in sheet right there. Yeah, so eight over 17, that's a ratio, it's a fraction, so it is going to be a rational number. And since it's hanging out here in rational territory, it's not gonna count as anything below that. Cool. So do we have any questions on this giant pile of Venn diagrams? How is eight over 23 an irrational number? So it's not that it, eight over 23 is, it's the fact that it's the square root of eight over 23. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. Which, let's see, eight, 23. According to Mr. Calculator, we have 0 0.58976782525. I'm sure more where that came from. So yeah, it's purely because of the square root. Something like that cannot be, uh, it cannot be rationalized. You can't make it into a rational number. So it's just kind of stuck being ugly. Oh, any more questions, comments, concerns? Um, I, I the square root of two, why, why is it a rational number? That square root of two? Yeah. Cool, so when it comes to irrational numbers, let's go back to Mr. Definition over here. Irrational numbers are any non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. And, and it says, as well as square roots that are not perfect squares. That's kind of just like a rule of thumb right there. Yeah. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's kind of just a rule of thumb there. Um, what ends up happening is if I punch the square root of two into my calculator, uh, I'm going to get something funky. And the reason for that is because the definition of a square root is, you know, it is what multiplied by itself is this number, essentially. So what times itself is two? Well, two is a little too basic. There's nothing that's just going to nicely factor in there. So Apparently, the answer is uh, roughly 1.414213562, and it will go on forever with a bunch of random numbers. It is not going to have a nice ending um, or any ending, ending, actually. Just going to keep going. Um, so that's generally what a rational is. It's something that cannot be written as a terminating decimal um, or a... Uh, a nice fraction. So, so if you can see that, that it's a number that, that doesn't make sense. I mean, kind of, yeah. It's not very rational. <laughs> Much as I've been described. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you, it's basically if you're if you have your doubts, punch in the calculator, see if it's really really ugly, see if something's repeating. Um, some I'm not even gonna lie, I've I've dealt with large enough <laughs> fractions that it'll go out eight decimal points and then start repeating those same eight decimal points. And it's really hard to be able to tell that those are rational numbers at that point, but usually by that point, in math nobody's gonna ask you if it's a rational or an irrational number. That's, yeah, you know, that's like when we get, get to a certain point and I tell you something's the standard form of a line, I'm also going to tell you that nobody uses it as the standard form of a line and when you use it, you're not even gonna think of it that way. <laughs> so, yeah, I will also uh, throughout the class impart my knowledge and little things that I've picked up over, you know, a ridiculous amount of time doing this stuff. Uh, Cause again, I've not always been happy with the way that math is taught or explained. So I usually have 
a different way of explaining certain things. We're not going to learn that uh, that um, that weird math, are we? That the kids were learning a couple a couple years ago. Okay, so oh, you got the guy with the opinion on that, uh, <laughs> but it's not going to go the way you th you think it's going to go. So Common Core. So th first of all, when it comes to Common Core math. The only things that are different about it are like the very, the very basic stuff. And a lot of the confusion comes about because I have tutored so many people that are math teachers and they are uh, just teachers in general for small children. They're bad at math too. They're really bad at math sometimes. I'm not even gonna lie. So the idea of here, learn this and teach it to children never clicked. And if they're teaching it to those kids and they're confused about it and they bring it to you and you don't know what you're doing and you're confused about it, it's just a bunch of confusion. Um, but as long as it is taught both the way you're used to and that way, I actually like it a lot because it's actually the first time I've ever seen somebody do how I do math in my head on paper. It is legitimately better to do it that way in your head. It's just a way to for teachers to be able to grade that concept. Because how else are you going to have somebody put a thought on a piece of paper? Now, in terms of actually writing stuff on paper, oh, yeah. The, the way that you're, you've done it your entire lives, much easier to do it on paper. But um, when we get to, like, subtracting numbers and you know, people would get really mad at saying, hey, why are they telling you to add instead of subtract in a certain way? Because it is literally easier in your head if you're subtracting two numbers to start from the lower one and add your way up to the other one. And I saw that on Common Core and I was like, oh my God, they are writing, they're writing things down the way I think of them. And you know, if I got a math degree and I can wing this stuff pretty decently up through calculus, maybe it's a good way to look at things. Now, is, does that mean that teachers are going to understand it? No, no, that's yeah, that's a completely different story entirely. And that's why we should fund education, but that doesn't work out too well. And that's why I have a day job. All right. That's why we had to teach, I had to hire one of the history teachers from here over at GameStop for one holiday season so he could pay the bills education all right what was i talking about i get on rants a lot you're gonna do, have to deal with that i apologize that sucks um yeah any questions no all right clicking on this thing hey look place value place value is the thing so in terms of the number system, uh, what we are technically using is called the decimal system. You probably never really thought too horribly hard about what that means, but DEC is the prefix meaning 10. It's because every single spot in our decimal system has 10 possible values. Um, it's like uh, when we're talking about computer science and binary, binary is ones and zeros, right? because every single place value has two options, a one or a zero, and then it moves to the next slot over, and that's a one or a zero, so that's binary. We're used to decimal, which is 10 options, 10 options, 10 options. You wanna see something horrifying when I took a computer science class, there was hexadecimal, which means every slot has 16 options, zero through nine, and then A through F. Oh my God, that was really hard to compute stuff. Um, do math in hexadecimal? It sucks. All right. Luckily, you're not going to have to deal with that. It's great. Uh, so the main thing with decimal place value, we are going to get into decimals very quickly, which usually refers to uh, pieces of whole numbers, right? If I have 0.1, that is a tenth of a whole number. If I have 0 0.01, that is a hundredth of a whole number. Um, and for the most part, we're pretty decently, you know, decently okay on that one. The only thing that always kind of drove me nuts is that 
you know, with the whole numbers, you have to move over twice to get to the tens place. And with the decimal points on the other side, you move over once to the, get to the, the tens place because there's no ones place. Is that, is that just me? Okay. My brain worky funky, I'm sorry. But yeah, there's a decimal place value chart is, uh, is right there. It exists. That's what I got. As, yeah, that's literally all I'm rolling with. Now, I throw that there because of rounding. Now, I like to, I like to throw a lot of trick questions for rounding. Um, I actually, when I was setting this class up to uh, have work alone problems, I erased a lot of my horrible trick questions. Because, uh, uh, you know, most people are pretty decently understanding of rounding. You go to the end of where it is you're talking about, and you're able to round up or round down, right? Um, but it gets a little trickier when you're rounding in the middle of certain numbers. Um, this particular example, uh, we have 9,953, and we'd be rounding it to the nearest thousand. Well, you know, 9,900, that's pretty close to 10,000, so you would round up, right? And the way it works is you would actually look at that place value. Where are you, Mr. Spotlight thingy? I don't know if I can get rid of this thing while I'm using it. All right. You would look at the place value for the thousands place, and then you look at the at the, the place value right after it. You always look at the next one. You say, okay, next one, are you five or more, or are you four or less? Well, it's over five. So if it's over five, you increase that digit by one and round off everything else to zeros. So the next digit was a nine. So you're like, okay, we're gonna round up. You will round up to 10,000. Um, now, how do I make this a horrible, horrible thing for some people? What if I rounded to the nearest tens place? Everybody always rounds to the, the highest digit or the lowest digit. What if we did it in the middle? That's a little trickier, right? Well, if I looked at the tens place, same concept. You look at the value in the tens place, which is a five, and you look at the next one. The next one is a three. So the three is below five, which means you would round down. This guy rounded to the nearest 10, would be 9,950. Now you might say, why would I do that? I don't know, it depends. It's like with financial math, why, why, does, why does sometimes they use 360 for the amount of days in the year? That drives me nuts. I kind of hate that. Sometimes in statistics, it, bounce, it bounces between 360 and 365. Why? I don't know. Cuts. Just remember the entirety of our financial system is completely reliant on backwards compatibility with Excel spreadsheets that were made in the late nineties with a bunch of complicated formulas that nobody remembers how to deal with. That's literally the truth. If, if, a, if a version of Excel comes out and breaks that compatibility, we're gonna see banks collapse. Well, we already had banks collapse earlier this well, week. Yeah, because they're run by idiots. But on top of that, you know, instead of moving everything over to, I don't know, software, they just, the amount of things I've seen. And like, I, I worked at the criminal records unit at the state for a little while, and uh, people did not know what to do with those spreadsheets. Like, yeah, he doesn't work here anymore. We can take a look at it to see if it can, we can mess with it. Like, hmm. Hmm, that's scary. All right. All right. There's literally like eight people in the state of Nevada that their job is to enter like criminal dispositions. Entire state. When I got hired, they were like 15 years back. That's why you'll see some Damn. people get, get DUI first and then DUI first and then DUI first because it's not on the rap sheet yet. Yeah, yeah I saw some people have like six or seven DUIs. 
I've seen a lot of things I don't like. Yeah, no, yeah. And then, you know, I like to bike around town. So I'm very much between that job and my own eyes. People complain about California drivers. Nevada drivers suck too, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, they do. And I lived in Oregon. You know what? Oregon drivers suck. So just in general, drivers suck. Just assume that everybody's going to run you over. It'll be better. You just got to make that assumption. I had one person stop, look both ways, sunny day, bright, bright, sunny day. I'm coming on a bike. Looks both ways, looks right at me. Waits until I'm right in front of him and starts going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, that's cool. Death. Yeah. That meme I decided to keep on purpose. That's actually one of my favorite things. You'd never want to be that guy. And a teacher walks up to you during an exam, looks at your paper. Make sure you read the questions carefully, guys. Hmm. Ah, that means you have to go back and fix your answer. Hmm. Yeah, whatever you're doing, you broke it. All uh, right. So, examples. Rounding to the nearest hundred on 3,250. Well, easy. We have look at the hundreds place. Should be this guy right here. Look at the next digit. Next digit is five. Since it's a five, that means you're going to round up. So this guy will move up to a three. That's going to round off to zeros. So you'll be at 3,300, right? You know, I will say that, you know, if any of you are, are hurting right inside right now, some of you are, are cool with this lesson. Some of you are probably hurting inside. I will say that I worked retail and the amount of times I had to make people recite their alphabet during an interview, it's really high. <laughs> you would think it was good, but, you know, and then they'd recite it. And then I'd hand them, you know, I worked at GameStop, I'd hand them a pile of games and be like, put these in alphabetical order. And they couldn't, or they'd make a horrible mistake. I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to bulldoze Carson High, and I'm going to build something in its place. All right. <laughs> I don't know what, but I want to fix it. All right. So rounding to the nearest 10. So we have 323.5. Uh, well, we would move over to the tens place, which is that two. Look at the next digit, which is a three. Say, okay, that means it's gonna go down. So we'd round off to 320. You might say, hey, why do you have a 0.5? I don't know, because it's there. It's a trick 0.5. You're not supposed to look at the 0.5. I don't care about that 0.5. I care about the tens place and the one right after it. Right? Yeah. He is the teacher. Hey, you sit down and learn some math too. <laughs> I expect almost running, running and hiding. Um, <laughs> I've had people be like, okay, I, you know, I got a job, I got a kid, can I bring my kid to class? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, but if you, if you turn the iPad volume on, I'm going to put a notepad, notepad in front of the kid. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. <laughs> And I hate iPads in this Game Boys. Um, I still have my Game Boy. Thank you very much. All right. Round to the nearest 10, 499. Oh, what do you think? 500, yeah. If I rounded that to the nearest 100, 500. And that, that happens. Um, one thing I do like to, to point out with rounding that's Sometimes a little funkier is that like, you know, if I was rounding in the nearest hundred on this guy, you know, I'd look at the next digit, say, yeah, it's a nine and then it have to move up. But what happens if it was a four and then that digit was a five and would you have to do rounding there and then rounding there? You could accidentally round a couple of different spots and push something a little higher than it needs to be. And I've seen a lot of people do that. Um, when it comes to rounding, you are only worried about the digit you're looking at and the digit right after it. 
if you start processing, oh, but this would round over here, this would round up to this, this would round up to that. You start at the end and you start rounding up all the way down, you are going to get a pretty hefty rounding error. You know, so you know, don't do that. That's, that's really what I'm rolling with, don't do that. All right, round to the nearest tenth, 0 0.74, what we got? Yeah, 0 0.7. So the tenths place is that seven right there, the next digit's a four, so it'll round down. If that was a zero, we wouldn't care if it was there. When you're playing with, do it with decimals, you can have as many zeros as you want at the end of them. It just means that there's nothing there, right? It's like my wallet. Um, <laughs> Every time a little kid comes up to me, look, I got a $5 bill. And I'm like, wow, technically you have so much more money than me. Because <laughs> credit exists. <laughs> that, is, that is painful. You ever see a kid with a Ziploc bag full of change and be like, that kid has more money than me. <laughs> it's always a Ziploc too. It's always a Ziploc. Or a shoe. That one was gross. They were sweaty. <laughs> Seriously, if you're ever worried about disease or catching something, wash your hands after handling money. Oh my God. I knew one girl, she, she had a job. You're gonna be able to pick up where it was, but she pulled out a wad of ones and it was coming out of her bra and it was soggy. And she bought a video game with it. And then I had to use it for change. <laughs> So don't <laughs> so don't Swine. use bills as a straw. Mm. <laughs> when I was a cashier, I used to have to go home and put lotion and like sanitizer across my knuckles because they'd start cracking from God knows what was on there. <sighs> I don't know how I made it through that job with, uh, without COVID. I pulled that off. But then, huh, I, I sanitized the hell out of that counter. There was nothing alive, nothing. Nothing good, nothing bad, nothing. Rants, I do it a lot. All right. <laughs> so, rounding examples, work alone. Do I need to work alone on this or do I just ask everybody? Yeah, I like that idea. I feel like, it, I feel like everybody can, you know, can pull this off. Hey, you know those classes where the teacher's like, you know, you're really quiet and then the teacher calls on you and you're like, oh, God. Mm, I don't know if I'm going to be that guy yet. I don't know if I'm going to be should. that guy. I will, I will 100 percent be that guy to people that aren't paying attention. If you're paying attention, and you're having trouble. I don't know if I'll be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. That guy's a jerk. But if you're not paying attention, whoa. Heck, when I was tutoring, I even had one student who would ask me a question, expect me to do it on the board, and then go off on, on a conversation off to the side. And I'd just stop what I was doing, wait till she, she was done talking, realized I was looking, and be like, I don't like you. I don't have a filter. Um, <laughs> or chiming in your opinion on their conversation. Oh, God, I love doing that. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my God. It's so much fun. All right. Uh, number five, round to the nearest hundred, 3.141. What is it? 3.100. So we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. So you look at the hundredths place. Oh, okay. 3.13. Nah, we already have a four. It's not going to go lower. You look at that digit, and then you look at the digit that comes after it. And the digit that comes after it is going to decide whether or not this stays the same or if it goes up. It's never going to drop further. It's never going to drop further. It's not going to go to, to one three. It's not going to jump up to one six. It really can either stay the same or go up by one digit. Um, so you would take that four, you look at the next digit. It's a one. If it's below five, and that means you round down. Rounding down means it stays the same. Rounding down means everything after that digit just poofs into zeros. So 3.140. 3.140. Yeah. 
Yeah, and when it comes to 3.140, when it comes to uh, trailing zeros on decimal numbers, you don't need them. Um, now, when you're doing addition, subtraction, you know, that sort of thing when it, uh, with decimal points, I like to have them there because it makes the perspective a lot easier. Um, it helps for that. But 3.140 is the same as 3.14, which is the same as 3.140000. Since there's nothing over there, you don't really need to have it there. It's not not like um, like it's if you had necessary. if you had thirty thousand, those zeros are necessary, right? Because those are place values you care about. You're not going to round thirty thousand dollars down to three dollars. Like you are fired. That sucks. Um, <laughs> like that is. That's a big deal, but yeah, that's essentially where we're going with that is that at the end of it with decimal points, doesn't much matter for zeros. Um, now, if you're ever rough on rounding to the nearest hundreds, just remember hundreds means cents, it's money. Second, you put everything in terms of money and food, people immediately understand more. I have noticed this significantly over my time tutoring. People will tell me they're awful at math and be like, all right, what if uh, what if you owe me this much money and I give you this much and blah, 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 blah. Complicated computations come out of people immediately from that. <laughs> like it can happen. All right, number six, if the bill at a furniture store comes to $3,257, what is the rounded value of the amount to the nearest 10? 3260. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, because you look at the tens place, say, yep, the next digit is a seven. So that means it's going to round up. So that drops to a sub, goes up to a six. After that, you got a zero. Whoop de doo. And if the bill comes to 3284, what is it to the nearest hundred? Yeah. And this brings up the question, hey, are mattress stores real or are they money laundering operations? Money laundering operations. <laughs> the mob is real. The mob is real, but so is an insane price markup on that. I Years ago, I spent what 150 bucks on my mattress. Still going. It's good. I'm not dropping a couple thousand on one of those things. No, no, we ain't playing that game. All right. <laughs> hey, look, adding and subtracting. We love this. We love this. If anybody has kids, you probably dealt with this a little more recently than some. Um, it's how that goes, right? But yeah, we're gonna go through the motions. We're gonna do everything. And after we do all these things, like a good chunk of other math comes in the future, you just grab a calculator and roll with it, right? But I will say that having a really good grasp of the fundamentals, like when I, I got a degree, I took calculus and everything. When I took calculus, I found it hard. When I started tutoring people in, basic algebra and stuff, that calculus got so much easier to me because geez, I got I got the basics down. Uh, if you get start getting things down from this point, all the math afterwards is gonna be just easy. Okay, no, you're gonna struggle and then it's good. And then the, the net, by the next lesson, you're gonna be like, wow, this one sucks. I wish I was doing that. That's usually how that goes. It's got a loop. All right, so addition and subtraction are two operations which involve bringing two or more numbers or things together to make a new total. Uh, when adding numbers together, the numbers must be lined up by place value before adding. With decimals, numbers must be lined up at the decimal point before adding. Subtracting is similar to adding. Line up the numbers by place value and subtract borrowing from the next column when necessary. Um, now, the main thing with, uh, well, before I start ranting, Da, 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 da. No, nope, yeah, don't need to say it because it's actually written down already. I do that a lot. All right. So conventional method of addition on papers done by placing your numbers on top of one another vertically by place value, then adding columns, one or blah, 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 blah. Okay, you know that. 
that stuff, yeah. Um, when the column adds to 10 or more, the tens place must carry to the next column because, hey, if you add up by 10, it goes to the next place value. Makes sense, right? Um, now, subtraction. This is one that I forgot. And when somebody asked me how to do this once, I was like, I've been through calculus one, two, three, and differential equations. Why can't I subtract two numbers together on paper? Um, when you are subtracting uh, numbers, oh, it's the, the last paragraph, sorry. Um, when the top number is subtracted from the bottom number is result in negative, you have to borrow 10 from the next place value in order to continue an operation. But the last one is what I got, got stuck on. When you're subtracting a larger number from a smaller number, I completely forgot to do this. It will break unless you put the larger value number on top. So if you're subtracting a larger number from a smaller number, you kind of have to do the subtraction backwards and slap a negative on the end. That's, that's literally it. Uh, I tried very hard to find a good way to analytically put that on paper. But honestly, this is just the easiest way to think of it. It's just, yeah, do the bigger one minus the smaller one, slap a negative if that's the case. Um, adding negative or positive numbers together. I find that this is something that a lot of people struggle with, whether they believe it or not. Oh, working retail. Yeah, you know, when I worked retail, I used to tell people I had two jobs. I had one where I go to and help stupid people and one where I went and taught math. Um, <laughs> let's, I love retail jobs. Oh, they're good for stories. Oh, um, yeah. When, when a mom ran out of her car and threw, threw change at me because I made her get out of her car because her like four-year-old kid was buying an M-rated game and she was like, where do you think you got the money? Um, yeah, that was fun. Then to, tried to demand a, a discount <laughs> for having to get out of the car to buy your kid that was probably roughly learning how to read an M-rated game. Oh man, when kids, uh, when parents would buy kids Grand Theft Auto, I'd be like, remember, don't touch the strippers when the bodyguards are looking. <laughs> they usually made us got a second look at that point, and then they're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be buying this for my small child. Um, <laughs> that was usually what would do it. I would always find a way. Tried to memorize how to say the, the ratings in Spanish for some of the kids that would just get their parents to come in, nod their heads. Um, <laughs> that was pretty common. <laughs> That was actually really common. When I busted out the mature rating stuff in Spanish, they were like, oh God. And then getting those kids yelled at, oh, it was great. Um, so <laughs> combining two or more numbers. Uh, so I find that a lot of people actually have a lot of trouble with this one. Um, and so I found a nice way to make it work before it clicks. Like once it clicks, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, I get this. But if it doesn't click yet, how are you gonna to remember to do it? So I just kind of kind of pulled this up. Um, so if the signs are the same, so if both are positive, both are negative, you can add the numbers together and you keep that same sign. Um, if the signs are different, one positive and one negative, you're going to find the difference between the numbers to so subtract the numbers together and you keep the sign of the larger number. Because if I got like five minus 20, well, the difference of that would be 15 and the minus 20 was bigger. So you're gonna be in the negatives, right? Also, you can look at it as money. If you have $5 and somebody charges you $20, how much in the hole are you right now? You can generally figure out 15 pretty quick, right? <laughs> how it usually goes so if it's like negative five plus negative 20 what do you do then well both are negative negative five plus negative 20 is the same as negative five minus 20 that's one thing i actually wanted to touch on that i didn't put in the slides um so before i go into that rant um both of those signs are negative at that point 
So you would take the five and 20, stack them together, 25, and then keep that sign. So it'd be negative 25. So you just slap them together, keep that sign. Now- It's, a, it's a multiplication and division that it's different, right? Yes, yes. And don't worry, I specifically have a slide on that idea. Yeah, because I always, that, that's, that's where I mix up the rules. Yeah. One way I've always liked to explain that is um, if you owe somebody money and they cancel your debt, you're taking away your debt. So it's like a negative of a negative. You're, you're coming up positive at that point. That's kind of how I like to look at those. And that is legitimately what, how that works. Um, but, you know, we'll get to it. Number line, number line. I love number lines. Number lines are useful. Number lines are things that we will use more in the future for inequality stuff. But for now, it's just a visual of where numbers are, right? Um, important things to note, if you're not wildly familiar with a bunch of random numbers, notice that when you go into the negatives, you start you know, from the zero going to the left, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, blah, blah, blah. That literally means that negative nine is a larger number than negative 10, right? Because it is further to the right. It is a larger number. Um, if you have negative $10 and somebody has negative $9, which of you is in a better position? The negative $9, right? So that's kind of how you want to look at those. Is the smaller value on those are actually kind of larger in terms of where you are. Um, so as it says, a number on the left is less than a number on the right, and the number on the right is greater than the number on the left. So you can actually use the number line to help add and subtract. Uh, you move to the right to add, you move to the left to subtract. Um, sometimes it's useful to have a visual. Sometimes it's not, you know? Hey, look, we have stuff. I love stuff. Hey, look, it's the halfway point of the class. Yeah, that's right. All of those rants, let's double them. I don't know about you guys. I am so tired right now. <sighs> Fell asleep at like 2.30, woke up for work at 4.30. Those are AMs, by the way. This is job number two. Thank you very much. I'm not that lazy. I'm pretty lazy, but I'm not that lazy. Okay, well, if I have like a vacation time allotted, I am that lazy. I will wake up at like 4.30 in the afternoon. I do not care. <laughs> My entire family is nocturnal. It's insane. You know that, you know, the running joke of the elderly waking up at five in the morning? That's when my mom goes to sleep and she is getting senile. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I come from a long line of night owls <sighs> and I get scheduled for morning shifts. Whew. Hey, look, we're adding things. We're adding on paper. I haven't done this in like a year. Let's see if I can break it. Um, that was actually when I was training new tutors, that was actually one of my fun uh, favorite things to do is to let them loose on the basic math and realize that let them realize that they are not hot shit. <laughs> are you are you gonna do common core right now? I mean I could if you really want me to. No. Um, is that supposed to be 84 or is that eight? I don't I don't know where I'm looking. I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ha <laughs> ha you're right. You're right. I can write. That is an 84. As an 84. <laughs> Things that are common in the entirety of me tutoring and teaching math. I will make mistakes. You guys will make mistakes. I will make mistakes. Nobody is better is, is going to be without mistakes. Doesn't That's matter. Good. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I have a degree. I have, you know, I usually was at the top level of all the tests that I took, but I never got 100%. Not once. I always did something stupid somewhere. I'd lose a sign. I would. I would. I would drop a number randomly. I would. I made a stupid mistake somewhere, or copying numbers. That's a positive, uh, popular one too. 
But if you think that I'm I'm doing something wrong, uh, don't be like, oh yeah, he knows what he's doing. No, no, don't make the assumption that I know what I'm doing at all times. <laughs> Do not make that assumption. Correct me, call me on my bowl. <laughs> Do it, I am all for it. All right, so we're not playing the common core game because, well, honestly, I am not as familiar with it. I could do it in my head, but I cannot write it down on paper, which is kind of like the opposite of how that would actually normally work out, because they're trying to teach you how to do math in your head at that point. Now, do the teachers know that? No. And that's why it breaks. Okay, so you put them one on top of the other. I usually put the, the larger one on top just for funsies. Does it matter? Not really, but that's how I do. Uh, so you take the, the first column off to the right, you add them up, four and seven is 11. Hey, 11's bigger than, than nine. I can't fit a two digit number down here. So we're gonna put the, the last digit, the ones place down here, and then it's tens place is gonna go over to add to the tens places over here. That's what's happening when it comes to borrowing and carrying and stuff. It's really just, yeah, now it's that's another part of that column I have to add up. So we add up that whole column. We got eight, we got three. That's going to get you to an 11. Plus we have that 11 that spawned off of here. So we have that 10 technically right here. So we have 12. We have no other digits to carry to. So we can just write out the 12. Whoop de doo, we're at 121. I like it, you like it. The weird clown that's hiding in your closet and looking over to you right now also likes it. Um, I often make weird, creepy clown references, especially when I'm at work. My other job is a phlebotomist, so when people are about uh, are worried about getting stuck with a needle, I'm like, don't worry about it. Just Focus on the murder clown. And they're like, what? And then I poke him. Um, <laughs> I'm not here to make you feel better. I'm here to distract you during that moment. He got Georgie too. Uh, we all float down here. Um, <laughs> at which point I usually go, hey, are you, ta are you talking Skarsgård or Curry? If we're going to pick a favorite. You know, Curry. we got production values, but it's freaking Tim Curry. Um, oh, <laughs> There's no, there's no contest. They're coming out with that prequel uh, uh, TV show too. Yeah, and they're gonna cast a new Pennywise. Mm. I don't know how I feel about any of this, but as long as they don't adapt the weird sewer scenes in the book, like I am not gonna say them out loud. I am being recorded for a YouTube video right now. <laughs> I am not going to say out loud what actually happens in the book. It. <laughs> right. Oh my god. Right. What the hell. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Stephen King was on a ton of drugs when he wrote it. It shows it is not appropriate. I have a very, very dark sense of humor. It is not appropriate. Um, not at all. I am not okay with it. You can all Google that in your own time. <laughs> all right. So we got 78 minus 103. So what we're going to do here, this is one of the ones that I told you tripped me up when I started looking back at how to do this stuff on paper. Uh, you would actually have to do. 103 minus 78. So you have to kind of do it backwards. And then remember that, hey, since I'm doing a larger number off of a smaller number, the answer is going to be negative. There's not a very easy way of doing that. But, you know. Whatever. So quick, quick question. Quick answer. With the first problem, you said it doesn't matter how you write it out. When it's uh, uh, addition, subtraction, it matters, right? Yes. Uh, so when it comes to adding and subtracting, um, the order that I'm adding doesn't actually matter. We're going to get to that. Um, I don't know, like 15 more slides away. Um, but they actually don't matter which order you add them because, hey, what's two plus three? What's three plus two? 
you got the same two things getting getting stuck together, right? So we're good there. Now that concept does kind of follow here. Um, we do have a 78 and a minus 103. One thing I wanted to touch on that I said I was going to, and then I completely forgot about, um, is that technically, technically, subtraction is addition, which is why if you look at anything in order of operations, they always tell you addition and subtraction are on the same level because technically they're the same. You're actually adding um, the inverse of a number. Uh, but if we think about it as something called subtraction, it melts our brain less. So that's kind of what's actually happening there. So technically, you could rearrange these, but that sign would have to stay on that number. And you could do them in a different order at that point, but that sign would have to stay on that number. The reason that it doesn't over here well, I'll show you in a second. Let's see what happens. This is just literally just a trick that we use to not break math, because otherwise you will see this break math over here. Let's, let's learn why we don't do it that way. It's fun. Um, now with 103, minus 78, so we're doing kind of the opposite way and remembering it's negative. With 103 minus 78, we're gonna have to borrow for this column right here, right? Which is incredibly annoying because the next time we actually have a number is two digits over, right? Now, a couple of things you can do. Since this is just a 10, we could cross out that whole thing and make it a nine and put a one here. Just to kind of future proof the concept, what I like to do is I like to go over to this digit and say, hey, I'm borrowing from here, but I don't have anything here. So I need to borrow something from here. That would technically like borrow that one over to here and turn that into a zero and turn that into a 10 because we're taking that zero with it. It's not the prettiest way of looking at it, but if I had like a five digit number and I was subtracting something and I had to deal with hopping over a zero, that's probably the best way to look at it because it is something that can break. I try very hard not to break things because I'm very good at it. But once I do that, yes, I can take that 10, turn it into a nine and borrow that over to here. So we've essentially, if you think about how this works, what we've done, basically done is we've taken 103 and we've split it up as a 90 and a 13. That's basically what you're doing when you're borrowing. And you're saying, okay, the 90 I'll deal with later, but I really need that 13 right here. That's, that's all it is you're doing. And I, I feel like it's useful to have that illustration. Okay, so 13 minus eight, you're gonna have a five. Then over here, we have a nine minus seven. We're gonna have a two. So we get a negative 25. What I like to do when I finish these problems, if I've started messing with signs and stuff, as I like to look at something and say, hey, does that make sense? 78 minus 103. Yeah, I could see those being about 25 apart. A uh, small one minus a big one, that's going to be a negative. Cool. Yeah, I can see that. I like to look at them and say, does this make sense? Because I have absolutely, in an engineering physics class on a test, I didn't remember something that is literally covered on the GED. And I said that a purse hit the ground from 10,000 feet up in 0. 0.00001 seconds. That sucker would have obliterated everything at that speed. <laughs> Just, whoo, yeah. I have made some good mistakes, so I try to avoid them. Now, why do we try to avoid this happening? Well, let's let's see what happens. If I do 78 minus 103, 8 minus 3, 5. Okay, cool. Uh, well, 
seven minus nothing? Seven. And then I don't really have anything over here. Zero minus one? Mm, yeah, that's that's not right, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's why you don't do it that way. And you could have even interpreted this as seven minus 10 and gotten a negative 35 from that, which would have been closer, but it still would have been horribly, horribly wrong. So if it would have been a positive 25, if the 103 was in front, right? Yeah, so if we had a 103 minus 78, then yeah, it would have been a positive 25. So it, it's always going to be a negative if the bigger number is at the end of the problem. If you are subtracting a larger number, yes. Okay. Yeah, you have 78 bucks. Somebody charges you 103. Are you in the negatives? Oh, yeah. Nah. Well, I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> money money is a thing i, I just gotta like transfer money out of my account that no <laughs> that doesn't work that way um you're breaking math now <laughs> reminds me of an elementary school when i said something was an was a negative answer and they were apparently just doing whole numbers and natural numbers and then they were like no no it's zero if I take away a bigger number from a smaller number, I have a negative. Well, yeah, eventually, but right now it's zero. <laughs> that, what? <laughs> yeah. Education. Training teachers should be a top priority. <laughs> Okay, so number three, we have placed the following numbers on a number line. This is literally just here to visualize how the number lines work. So we got four numbers, we got a number line. Don't judge my lazy number line, I will always make the laziest graphs you will ever see in this class. I do not feel bad. I will just slap a zero on there and call it good. Um, so we need to put all of these on the number line. We're not comparing them to each other. We're not, you know, stressing it. We're just making sure that they're all in the right order, basically, right? So negative 12, that's gonna be somewhere out here. You could count 12 little hash marks if you want to. Personally, yay, we're right there. There's a negative 12. Cool, we're happy. All right, let's look at five, let's look at seven. Well, we're gonna go off to the right to actually have some hash marks there. Okay, so we need five, one, two, three, four, five. There's our five. We need a seven. There's our seven. Where's the one half go? Between the one and the two. Not between the one and the two. Between the zero and the one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so one half is one half of the way from zero to one. That'll work right there. We like it. But yeah, you have to be careful when it comes to fractions. Now, if I threw something else on here, like, uh, I don't wanna make it, I wanna make it a little trickier at first. Let's say we had, uh, let's say we had to throw a five halves onto this thing. Not the prettiest thing, right? Yeah, we're gonna be in the positives. We like that, but it's a fraction. Where, where's Mr. Fraction gonna be hiding? Well, you have a couple of different options. You could um, convert this to a mixed fraction and see, you know, what is this like, you know, two and a half or something, or you could, you know, be lazy. It's just, you know, big fan of that idea. Uh, five divided by two, 2.5. So it's two and a half. Two and a half, so that means we would be right here. That's our five halves. 
You can totally get away with that. So is that how you kind of do fractions? You kind of just see like divide basically? Yeah, essentially, yeah. That's one way to look at it. Um, I'll be covering fractions horribly in depth because uh, who here likes fractions? Mm, maybe nobody heard me. Nobody's raising a hand or anything. Oh, I like fractions. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I knew you would. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, people. So here's the thing with fractions. You, learn, you get taught fractions at a young age and you hate it, right? So you will do everything in your power to avoid it. And the more you avoid it, the less you know about it. And you avoid it for so long that it's all gone. If anything was there, it ain't there. And you're trying not to think of it. So I'm going to do a ton of fractions in this class. Fractions everywhere. If something has the option for me to cram a fraction into it, it's going to have a fraction. We have fraction's all over the place. Fraction is all, all, is all over uh, construction. Yeah. Yeah, it's got really good applications. Um, that said, you know, I, I really hate, like this could have also been written um, as like a mixed fraction, two and a half, which is easier to understand, but it's significantly harder to work with in math. And I hate them. I hate, hate them so much, um, but they're useful for word problems and, you know, real world stuff. So, yeah, they will be, they will be touched. Okay. Okay. What, uh, what other stuff do I have? I got, uh, got four and five. I like those. Those are good. So the next couple are going to be using number lines for visuals and using them to add and subtract. Okay, so using a number line, we're going to subtract six from eight. I wanted to have these on here because usually having it written that way, I'll see. You know, 50, everybody's got a 50 50 shot of doing it backwards. Um, because you would look at this and you might think, hey, it's basically, it says subtract six and eight. You might do six minus eight, but it says from eight. You're taking six away from eight, which means you would start with the eight and you're subtracting the six. So this is eight minus six. <laughs> So in order to use the number line for this, you would start at the eight and we are going to subtract six. Since we're subtracting, we are going to move to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, right here. I'm gonna kind of do this for a visual. We would be a two, so that would be our answer. Could we do this an easier way? Oh yeah, absolutely. But this is all about being able to visualize it, being able to understand what's happening as you're moving back and forth along the number. Adding five to a negative three. All right. The way that's phrased makes me think we're going to start at the negative three and then we're going to add five to it. One, two, three, negative three. So we're going to start here and we're adding five, which means we're going to go to the right. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Another visual line showing where I'm going. Oh my God, what's this answer? Oh my God, it's a two again? What? Why do I have so many twos? 
I don't know. I actually think I made both of these questions up blindly. So that's just a fun coincidence. <laughs> All right. Actually, before I jump over there, does anyone have any questions on, well, anything? Anything, you know, fortify you? Okay, so I have a question about the 78 minus 103. Does that turn into a negative because you're swapping the numbers and subtracting them that way? Just to make it an easier way of like, why do you add the negative? So, are you gonna, is the question is why is this negative here essentially? Yeah, is it because? Mm -hmm. So the idea is because if we're doing a smaller number minus a bigger number, we know that we're gonna end up with a negative, but the method that we have to actually find that breaks if we do it straight. Right. So we have to find a way around it. So the way around it is that we kind of reverse these so we were, we're essentially doing 103 minus 78 instead, but that minus being put there is purely because we know that our actual answer would have to be negative. So we kind of, we're kind of reversing it, and then by putting that negative there, we're reversing it back. Okay. Yeah. So uh, two wrongs are making a right. That's basically what's happening there. Only two in negative. multiplication. Uh, what? Only in multiplication, two wrongs make a right. Well, in this particular method, it did too. And also, random coincidences that happen throughout our lifetimes. Two wrongs can make a right. You don't question anything, you just move along. Oops, something broke, but I ended up with more money. Cool. All right. Move along. What? Yes, that is more efficient. I did mean to do it that way. Yes, I am a genius. Give me more money. All right. Just remember, if you learn how to automate part of your job, do not tell anyone. This is a universal rule. Do not tell your boss. Hey, I figured out how to put half my job into a spreadsheet. Cool, can I take a look at it? Congratulations, no. you will no longer have a job. Do not, do not tell anyone. Sit there, play Tetris. <laughs> Bless Thank you. Thank you. That was a very long distance bless you right there. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, hey, look, I'm going to make you guys do this one on paper. Jesus is never far away. Yeah. You got paper? Right on the back of your hand with a Sharpie. I don't know. I'm going to kind of be quiet for five minutes. As you can tell, that's going to be very difficult for me. I do have ADHD. Uh, however, if you have questions specifically, ask me and I will give nudges. <laughs> this video is an hour long <laughs> if you're ever really bored i highly recommend just searching the phrase 10 hours on youtube find some weird stuff <laughs>
I don't know how long things take. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I see that people are still working. So, you know, it's cool. It's cool. I think, uh, I think every, every time I cover anything, and I have a time amount on there. We're just going to just going to assume there's an ish on there. Solid ish. Okay. Well, how do we do? How do we feel about this? Anything we're like, what the hell about? Okay, so I have, I'm okay with everything else, but with number nine, mm -hmm. how are you going to combine the report? But when you're adding, you're supposed to go to the right. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Let's look at that one first. <laughs> so that one can be kind of tricky um, because we can tell that what we're essentially meaning is that we're combining things like that, right? I'm gonna put this in parentheses because having two signs like that side by side just irks me. Um, so that's basically what's happening, right? Um, well, one of the things, one of the tricks that we have, if we look at, if we look at number two with this, the 78 and the 103 thing again, um, when I mentioned that we could rearrange how these ones worked and then rearranging them, we had to be very careful about on this. 
Um, that was because that sign is technically attached to that number. So subtraction is effectively the same as adding a negative. So by that extension, if I'm adding a negative, I could change this to subtraction. And if I'm subtracting, I can go to the left instead of the right. That point, that zero zero is there. One, da, da, da. There's a bunch of random points. Okay, so we have the negative three. And you can look at it a couple of different ways. You can say we're adding a negative. If we're adding a negative, that means that we're combining it with something that's going to push us to the left. Um, or we could look at it as if you just take that plus minus thing and turn it into a minus. Um, so this, as I said, adding a negative is the same as just subtracting. Then we would go to the left that way as well. So we just go one, two, three, four. We'd be right here. So we are over at negative seven. Does that make a little more sense? Yeah. Cool. I like it. I like the thumbs up. Thanks, Josh. Throwing gang sessions. All right. <laughs> I got you, buddy. Uh, I dated a girl whose little brother was deaf, and I always said that he was like, you know, throwing things up from the bloods or something. Um, <laughs> oh my God, what's he doing? Let's keep him out of Oakland. Um, all right. So uh, we got nine out of the way. Any questions on any of the others? How do we feel? How do we not feel? Any of these are really like, what the shit? Not well, otherwise. you know that 560 minus 42 is going to be a positive number. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You better know it. <laughs> I have $560. I am char charged $42. I am in the negatives. What has happened? A cashier has made off with a lot of money. Used to have little kids just throw all their money on the counter and be like, okay, I'm not going to rip you off, but someone will. <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> Count your money and hand it to me. <laughs> ah. So how do we feel about the 560 minus 42? Do we understand it? Do we need to see it? Are we good? Are we like, if I don't get this, I'm going to throw it at a calculator? That's a possibility. And to, to, to be fair, when it comes to assessment stuff and high set and GED and all of these things, I'm not 100% sure, because I haven't taken those myself, I'm not 100% sure where the whole addition and subtraction on paper sits. Um, I don't know if that's a necessary 100% skill but I do feel like it's an important thing to understand because slapping everything into a calculator is only good up, for, up to so long, you know? Don't wanna to be too dependent on them. And all my teachers growing up that said I would not have a calculator in my pocket all, at all times, they were very wrong. Also, I was that freaking awkward nerd kid with the calculator watch, so I already proved them wrong. I love those watches. Right? Like, yeah. That's how I get dates right there. Yeah. Can calculate a tip like no one's business. All right. Hey, look, multiplication and division. Multiplication, not so bad. Division. Who likes long division? Are you excited about doing that? I'm already seeing some eyes on that one. Yeah. I'm not excited. I am. Okay. <laughs> when I talked about uh, knocking 
new tutors down a few pegs. It was usually it was long division. Just the stuttering that would come from, oh yeah, I know everything. Uh, uh, mm, oh, mm. At some point, you always got to learn. You just in the grand scheme of things, you know nothing. Be humble with it. Everybody you meet knows something you don't. All right, multiplication and division. So in multiplying numbers, the place value does not need to be lined up. In the case of decimals, place value is disregarded until the end. And then you count out how many digits are after all of your decimal places and the numbers you multiply together. And you just say, okay, that's how many decimal places I'm gonna have in my answer. Those are kind of funky. Those are interesting. Um, I don't think I have any of those on here because, well, we haven't actually covered decimals yet, but the idea is there, right? It's I thought we covered hard. decimals earlier. Well, okay. We covered the decimal system. We covered a little bit of decimals. I haven't played around with like the meat and potatoes of it. Like actually like playing around with this stuff. Also, I love this picture. I love it so much. Just imagine that thing trying to push snow. But yeah, that exists. And yeah, you're right. I should probably like bring that in earlier. Whatever. <laughs> Where was I? Oh my God. Hey, there we are. You know, you brought up a good point. Let's see. Let's make some that suck. Uh, Two. Uh, playing music. No, I is not music. Set up professional audio and audio settings. <laughs> All right. All right, somebody give me a number between one and 100. 55. All right. Yeah, let's just leave that that way. Let's make this fun. Yeah, good enough. All right, cool. Where was that? Over here somewhere. Right okay. There. So yeah, when you multiply numbers of decimals together, the place value is disregarded till the end, at which point you count the total number of digits after the decimal in the numbers you have multiplied and insert the decimal point at that place in your answer. So when you're dividing numbers, you have to move the decimal point to the right of the ones place in the divisor. So you're only dividing by integers. And then the answer above the division symbol will be lined up to the decimal point. That is just the leaning into long division explanation there. Long multiplication. It's just multiplication. That's just what it's called. Nobody ever calls it long multiplication, but it's long multiplication. Now you know this and knowing is half the battle. All right. So, just like with the old addition subtraction stuff, write the larger number above the smaller number, uh, multiply the, uh, can this freaking set up professional audio thing go away? Thank you. Okay. Multiply the numbers in the one place, of the bottom number by the numbers in the one place of the top number. Uh, yeah, you get the idea. You start with the bottom one, bottom right, you multiply it across the top, and then you move to the next one on the bottom, across the top, and you just kind of keep going. You know, we get, we're, we're gonna have some better visuals here in a minute, right? Um, when you start with the tens place of the second number, so when you're moving over to the next number, um, you put a zero in that one's line below the first product and you continue. And then when you're done, you add them all together. It's funky to write down on paper, it's easy when we work it out, which we will be doing in a moment. This is the main thing that you got to commit to memory. 
um, multiplying and dividing negative numbers. So the signs are important. If the signs are the same, the product, which is the end result of multiplication or quotient, the end result of division, is positive, always. So you got plus times plus, cool, you got a plus. You got a minus times a minus, cool, you also have a plus. The only time that you, that, that you end up with a negative when you're multiplying uh, numbers together is when they're different signs. So you have a positive and a negative. So if you have a positive and a negative multiplied together, it's gonna end up with a negative. Now, one way to kind of look at that is that if you have the negative of a negative, it's kind of canceling out. So every two negatives that you have cancel out. So if you have another one thrown on there, if you have three negative numbers multiplied together, two of them are canceling out, one of them staying negative. That's basically how that's gonna go. Um, if you follow through that concept, you could multiply like 20 negative numbers together and you're gonna know you end up with a positive because if you have an even number of negatives multiplied together, you have a positive. You have an odd number, so you have one extra negative hanging out, then you end up with a negative. Everything else cancels itself out. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, blah, 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 blah. You have an odd number of them, it's gonna end up with a negative. Okay, let's actually do some of these. You have a question. Yes, I had two. So um, okay, I'm excited. That's the same uh, with dividing, right? Yes. This is okay. fully the same as dividing. I did not realize until this moment that I didn't write that down. Okay. And then Maria end up logging in. Oh. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, cool. And then my second just question. Just interrupt my class, why don't you? I'm sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> To the closet with you. Oh, on my way. <laughs> Two hours. All right. And then um, when you're multiplying and dividing decimals, if it's in, if the decimals are in the different spots um, and they're not lined up in the equation, uh, that doesn't matter until after the equation. When it doesn't matter you until add you're done. The decimals, right? Yeah. It, it... When it comes to those problems, I mean, you'll see it in a second, but yeah, it doesn't, it's not gonna matter until you're done. Um, and it's actually like a lot of people like freeze up when, when they're doing that, but it's actually really, really simple. Um, and I yeah, swear- you just add, add the decimal points, right? Yeah, you just say how many, how many places are after the decimal points in the first one and the second one. Put them together and be like, cool, that's how many places are after the decimal point in my answer. I'm back. <laughs> you got out of the closet? I did. Oh my God. Tragically. Uh, um, Alexis De Leon's computer died, so that she will be attending class as soon as her um, computer car is back up. Okay, I'll <laughs> allow it. Sounds good. Just this once. Just this once. Everybody gets one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, goodbye. I'll see you in five minutes. Possibly. <laughs> knew it. I knew it. It's a plot. It's a plot. All right. What the hell's going on? It's very easy to derail. I have really bad ADHD. I have really bad. I like, last time I had a doctor's appointment, I was like, hey, can you give me a psychiatrist referral so I can get on meds for ADHD? Because I. I miss being able to read books. I can't go more than one page at a time. Literally, I can only write this uh, write this class if fight or flight click uh, kicks in, so I can actually focus. I literally like I put all this together yesterday. <laughs> like I could, I cannot function until until that. So yeah, no. If there's a train in my head, it's gonna derail. It's gonna it's be really bad. good for one day. Yeah, no, it's well. Okay, to be fair, a lot of this I put together from old slideshows. Um, a lot of it I did completely and totally make up on the fly yesterday. And I also, uh, well, yeah. 
Is this the thing I need? I'm working with. Yeah. So I also like put this thing together for concepts that we're going to cover. That I'm hoping to cover. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have fun with this. I don't even. I don't even know. Just processing a little bit of it. Um, actually, now that I'm, you know, playing around with the Google Drive, I might actually point out. So, there we are. Hey, when did I start teaching this? 2021 fall. Okay, cool. That's how long I've been teaching it. it hasn't been two years yet. Okay, cool. So, this is the Google Drive folder that everybody has a link to in their email, which again, if you haven't gotten it, let me know. I've already replied to that to, to the one that I've gotten so far. I sent uh, you an email. I know, and I replied to it. Yeah, that's right. I'm a ninja. Um, <laughs> yeah, we apparently have at live.com as your email, not at Yahoo. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what happened there. Um, yeah, so this is this is where all the notes are going to be. Um, you can already see, yay, we got the the presentation here. Um, it's honestly, it's going to be in the this folder before class every time. If you're, you know, just checking it a couple hours before class and realizing it's not there, it's because I haven't done it yet. Um, you know, what happens when your teacher procrastinates more than the student? Um, but everything else in here is actually really, really useful um, to kind of give you an idea because everybody's, you know, working towards high set or GED. Um, I couldn't find the GED one, but um, this is actually the formula sheet that you're given when you take the high set. Um, and if you're taking it online and they don't hand you something on paper, the applicable formulas and such are just given to you. So the nice thing, I like to have this in here because I want people to understand when we get to like geometry and stuff, you're not gonna have to memorize the formulas and stuff, you're gonna have to memorize how to use them, which is really how life goes. I am so bad at doing so many things unless the formula is in front of me that I'm a freaking wizard, you know? So this is just really useful. Um, I also have a unit conversion chart. That's kind of useful. But you can see that a bunch of them were on the side of the other one. And this one, yeah. honestly, I just kind of found one day. And I thought it was awesome. Because it literally just has an insane amount of formulas and explanations for like it's, it's it's the cliff notes for everything now do not look at this if you're trying to learn because <laughs> this is just going to melt everybody's brain if you're trying to learn this stuff but yeah like throughout the entirety of GED which if you take the high set it's Honestly, it's covering the same stuff. So, hold up. This is all in high school, huh? <laughs> this stuff is all in high school. I learned it in high school. Jesus Christ! I tried really hard to drop it in high school. I eventually pulled that off, um, and then I failed college algebra when I went to college. Uh, but we can blame that one on watching too much Dragon Ball Z and not going to class. Um, That's excused. It is. 100%. 20 episodes later of... <gasps> uh, 17 hours of no fighting. Yeah, exactly. And Man, then why, could, why, is, why is Goku keeping a spirit bomb hidden when he's... So, like, they're a mile apart and he's holding his hand that's over his head, like... So much of the plot of that show just assumes people don't have peripheral vision. Um, that's that's the problem I'm breaking out with this. Um, 
So yeah, there's a lot on the GED and the high set and everything. I am not going to lie. It is, it is a little intense for how difficult some of that stuff gets. That is why for this particular class, I have concentrated on effectively the first half of the concepts that would be covered for it. Uh, now, you might say, when am I going to get to the second half? At which point I would say, uh, I don't know, that's a class I don't teach. Um, so there's actually um, a lot of like hands-on stuff that they, they'll do with Excel once you get to that point. Um, I might float the idea of teaching an advanced class. I really like that idea. Um, we tried something in the fall where we taught two, I taught two six week classes instead of one eight week class. And without, uh, when I just straight lectured, I covered almost everything, which was kind of hardcore. Like I straight up got up to the quadratic formula and everything. It was great. Never made it that far. But uh, just, you know, there's a lot. And at the end of the day, you're not trying to ace everything. You are trying to pass everything. You're gonna, you're gonna probably try to do what my brother did. Kind of get by. That's how he got his GED. And you know what? He can't add. Um, I love him. Don't get me wrong. But... I show him how to check his email every day. Um, it's okay. He's not going to watch this video. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's where we're going. Yeah. I feel like we should do stuff. Let's do stuff. I like doing stuff, right? That looks too easy. Let's put a three on it. Um, These are, good, these are good problems now. I like them. Oh my God, this guy's done rambling. He's finally doing something. Now you might notice that I do not use the little X for times at this point. That is uh, for a couple of different reasons. One, because once you get to algebra, uh, having an X somewhere that means multiply uh, causes a lot of problems. So I just decided I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna try. Not even gonna try to use that little X for multiplication. We're just gonna get used to it right away. Um, I'm just gonna write down the first two for now. It's your writing stuff down and you're like, oh man, he took it away already. Um, but yeah, usually I'll use a dot for multiplication. Um, so I'll use a dot for multiplication instead of the X. And then when I'm doing the actual long multiplication of this, um, I will put the larger number on top. Now, I will say that that's just by, okay, I'll put the X there because that makes sense. Um, I will say that that's just by common convention that I'm putting the smaller one on the bottom. You can do it either way, but if you put the smaller one on the bottom, your life will be easier. Um, if I have more digits on the bottom, that means I'm gonna have more rows of things multiplied together. Uh, if I have smaller numbers down here, then when I'm throwing it at both digits up here, it's gonna be quicker. Uh, just a bunch of different reasons for why we do that. Uh, but yeah, if you do it the other way around, it will still work, just not as pretty. So we like it, we like it easy, we like it pretty. Okay, so you always start with the last one on the bottom one. You take that and you're gonna multiply it through the top. So we're gonna to do four times two, we have an eight. And then we have a four times five, we have a 20. Normally you would carry the two, but we don't have anything further over. 
So we can bring that two down right away. Now we're moving over to this number. There's one thing I never understood in school was why I put that zero there. It's because I'm multiplying by, I, I'm effectively multiplying by a one, but I'm actually multiplying by 10. And because I'm multiplying by 10, I'm gonna end up with a zero at the end of whatever it is we're multiplying, right? Well, one times 52, I'm not even gonna, we're not even gonna play that game right there. Look, look at that. <laughs> One times 52, love it, beautiful. At this point, I'm gonna realize that I ran out of space. Yay for erasable ink. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've, I've literally used this exact notebook the entire time I have been teaching and it is, it is that thick. Like, I, I scan the notes and then I erase them. I can also use a blow dryer and it becomes invisible, uh, but no. I just prefer to uh, get it, like use a wet cloth and wipe it off. Because otherwise, if it gets cold again, well, it's going to have a lot of scribbles. Okay, so at this point, you add your products together. We get 728. One thing I always like to do, as I've said before, is I like to look at my answer and say, hey, does that make sense? 14 times 52. Well, 52 is pretty close to 50. Two 50s would be 100. So I would have uh, that happen seven times. So yeah, I'd be around 700. So it, it, it works. The powers of estimation. Do not, do not discredit estimation at all. It is very useful. Okay. Let's do that. I like that one. Let's do that one. Yeah, 569 times a 43. So we're going to do uh, three times a bunch of stuff. Three times nine. If you're not familiar with your multiplication tables or, you know, you haven't done it in a while. You can always count up by nines, nine, 18, 27. So we'd have a seven here and we'd carry the two. So that two is gonna end up being added to our next multiplication because you can kind of think of it as, yeah, that multiplication had a 27, the next one is gonna have whatever it, it's gonna have, but it's also gonna have that 20 hanging out. So that's why you add it, not multiply it or whatever, because it's already kind of there. Okay, so we'll have three times six, which is 18, plus that two, which is 20. So we'll have a zero here, I carry that two. Three times five is 15, plus two is 17. We have nothing to carry to anymore. So we're just gonna bring that over there. One of my sevens is a little shorter than the other. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, seven. It's going to be okay. I am hungry. All right. So hungry. I want another little Caesar's pretzel pizza. My God. I am one of those weirdos that actually wrote to corporate the last time they took it away. I was like, come on, you got to bring me back. Sometimes that works out nicely. I got a I got a bag of cereal once and it didn't have the uh, the marshmallows in it. So I just thought it'd be funny that their their, uh, their comment box on their website was actually smaller than this problem. And I was like, all right, let's make somebody's day. I've opened up Microsoft Word. I started typing out this long, crazy paper about how I'm a man child and I needed my marshmallows in my cereal. And 
like it was like a page and a half and I sent it to him. I know I made whoever, whoever read that I made their day. I ended up with an envelope with like coupons for like six, six things of cereal for free. It's great. <laughs> Red Bull does that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Like, uh, that whole gives you wings. Oh my god. And people, since it's alive, they'll call up and they exercise some weird. Weird. They'll, they'll send like a six pack of them so you don't sue them because it doesn't give you wings. I would consider doing that, but I hate Red Bull. Um, and also my ADHD is weird. It puts me to sleep. If I drink a Red Bull, it just knock me the hell out. Yes, sir. Yeah. Puts me to sleep too. Rockstar doesn't though. I don't know why. Um, right? Monster and uh, Red Bull put me to sleep. Yeah. Okay. Before I get derailed further, we have a four. <laughs> I'm going to multiply that. Okay. Four times nine. Well, I can be cheap about that. Two times nine is 18. So two 18s, gonna end up with a 36. So we're gonna have a six here and a three up here. And I just have to be very careful to remember that three is from this multiplication. Four times six is 24, plus that three is a 27. So I'm gonna put the seven here, carry another two. Four times five is 20, plus that two. It's 22, nothing to carry further to. So we're going to have that. We have now multiplied everything by everything. So we're going to add the two rows together. Seven plus nothing. Hey, guess what? We have a seven, nothing and six. Six, seven and seven is 14. So even more carrying is happening here. One, one, and a two is a four, and we get a two right there. Now, realistically, what are you going to do in your day-to-day -day life? You're going to break out the calculator. You're going to say 569 times a 43. Yeah, cool. I didn't make a mistake. All right. It's entirely possible. I mean, I'm good at it. I'm not great at it. It'll do. I know enough to know that I'm I'm an idiot. Never trust anybody who says they're speaking from authority and doesn't know that. Hey, let's do another. Let's do uh let's do that 34.2. Times negative fourteen point zero seven. Now we got decimal ones. This is where a lot of my like this is how you want to do this. It's a little little trickier, right? So I always put the smaller number on the bottom, but but. When we're playing with decimals, I usually recommend whatever you have the least amount of digits, put it on the bottom. Now, that's not to say that 34 isn't bigger than 14, particularly a negative 14, but this one has the most amount of digits. And when it comes to multiplying decimal numbers together, you are going to end up disregarding the decimals until later which means we're not going to just multiply these together. We're going to multiply 342 times 1,407. That's going to be the multiplication we're doing. Because of that, I would like to have this one on top. So I'm going to have minus 14.07 multiplied by 34.2. We do not need to line up our decimal points when it comes to multiplication or division. Division has its own funky little rule, but the decimal point is only gonna matter later. So since we're on a little bit of a crunch time, uh, gonna kind of run through this one a little bit quicker. Two times seven, 14, carry that. Two times zero is zero plus one. We have that, two times four, eight, 
2 times 1, 2. Now you'll notice that I'm not messing with the signs yet. That's again something we're going to worry about at the end. I'm sure there are conventions and ways of putting them on here now. I'm not a big fan of them. I like to make sure that whatever I'm doing is kind of safe, right? So <laughs> we finished that first line. We're going to go to the second one, start with the four. So four times seven is 28. So we'll carry that two. Four times nothing is nothing, plus two. There's that 28 again. Four times four is 16. So we'll have a six here. Carry that one. Four times one is four, plus one. We've got five. Now we move on to our next digit. Since we're on the third one, I have two zeros here. It's effectively, that means that we're not multiplying by three, we're multiplying by 300 by putting those zeros here, which works. Three times seven is 21. Carry that two. Getting really tired of carrying things. Three times nothing is nothing, plus two. Three times four is 12, carry that one. Three times one is three, plus one is four. Lots of stuff to add. Add straight down, get a four, a nine, an 11. So that carries a one. Uh, another 11. Carry that one, uh, eight and a four. Now here's the question, did I screw up my multiplication? Nope, we're good. Okay, so obviously 34 times 14 is not gonna be 481,000. Otherwise, I broke something in a bank and I'm rich, right? So there's a couple of things we have to take into account when we get this answer. First of all, our signs. We did a positive number times a negative number. If you do a positive times a negative, you end up with a negative. So we gotta make sure that's taken into account. The other thing is the decimals, right? So what you're gonna do is you're going to look at how many places we have after the decimal point. On this first one, we have two places after the decimal point. On the second one, we have one place after the decimal point. So you take those two places and one place, add them together, three places. That means that on our answer, we're going to have three places after a decimal point. So you move over until the decimal would be uh, have three digits after it, and that's where you put it. So again, you see how many digits you have after decimals on the thin numbers you multiply together, one here, Two here, put those ideas together. You have three, three after that decimal. So 34 times 14, both having a little bit of change on them. Yeah, I could see that being about 480 and change, right? That makes sense. So you have a couple of things to keep in mind there, the signs and how many digits you move over. Okay. All right, well, say 27, I really don't feel like making you guys do two more problems and then work a bunch of them on your own. So I'm gonna call it good. Does anybody have any questions before I break out? Um, yeah. So I totally forgot. Okay. Is train derailed. I get it from my perspective. All right. <laughs> Any concerns? No. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, you're all free. You're adults. I can't keep you here. You guys are already at home. I'm jealous. <laughs> right. 
I got the Thanks, buddy. Uh, well, uh, I'll see you later. Yeah, have a good night, guys. You too, man. Oh, Get you guys food. totally don't need to write up, write, write yeah. the time on the sign-on sheet because I know when you left. All right, you have a good one, Matthew. Yeah, have a good night. Good night, man. Good night, I'll miss you. Miss you too, bro. I'll see you later. Like it's good to see day. you. It's good seeing you too, man. Great luck. Just selling you video games. I miss picking up video games from you. Yeah. He's the greatest uh, video game supplier in the city and mathematician. This man's the man. I have, I, you should see my Nintendo Switch collection at this point, man. I'm not even kidding. I have over 900 <laughs> cartridges. Over nine? Over 900. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's my favorite system. All right. You know what? <laughs> Have fun, bro. I, I'm yeah. waiting for them to uh, remake or re uh, do the uh, Golden Eye. You can do so, that on Xbox. They kind of did, but not really. So, like, yeah, I know way too much about this stuff. So, one, <laughs> the actual Golden Eye. They just released it, like, what, a couple of months ago, a month ago or so? Um, yeah, I think so. Has, like, a quote-unquote remaster, just, like, scaled up. Um, on most systems, it's a digital download. On the Switch, you have to have um, the, the N64 level, like, Switch Online membership. The expansion um, pack, yeah. Huh? The expansion pack, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um and I haven't actually poked at it myself, but yeah, it exists. Um, but here's here's the weird thing: is back on on the Wii, and then they ported it to the PlayStation Three and Three Hundred and Sixty. Later, they did like this weird remake of GoldenEye, and GoldenEye was based on a movie, right? Yeah. They made this weird game where it was very clearly based on the other game that they didn't have rights to but the company that owns James Bond wouldn't let them use Pierce Brosnan so they basically made a redone story of GoldenEye with Daniel Craig <laughs> and it's like this weird expanded thing and it's cool don't get me wrong but it's so weird. Um, <laughs> but it exists, and it is hard to come by at this point, because honestly, like, who the hell is going to buy that? Um, I would. Right? I, well, I might consider it also. Me, me too, clearly. Um, <laughs> That's like I, the best uh, shooter game ever. Mm -hmm. It did not age well, though. I don't know if you played it anytime recently, but oh, God. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, it's just the controls alone. Um, the back taser. before analog sticks were a thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's <laughs> kind of like uh, the Shredder, the Shredder's Revenge game. Oh my God. I, so I love arcade beat em ups. Yep. I was foaming at the mouth for that game. I'm still waiting on my crazy physical copy from limitedrungames.com where it's going to come in like a, fake vhs case that slides out with a coupon for a for a pizza hut pizza like yeah like this pizza talk the, the talk about the pizza i want to try that little caesar's man right that is Something. have you had it before i have not dude it's life-changing <laughs> it i kind of I avoided it for a while to be honest with you now i kind of want to try it it's going to ruin your life it's gonna change your life on 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 pizza. Yeah, it is. It is right. easily one of the best things I've ever had in my life. Uh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, not even it's, kidding. It's very friendly. Very friendly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm ready for some friendly uh, pretzel pizza. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm gonna try well, I'm gonna... things pizza. I'll see you later. Oh, those are good. Yeah. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> the Stranger Things ones? Yeah. Yeah, they're literally made by an actual pizza company. I, it has their logo on the side. But it honestly, okay. it just tastes like a Red Baron where they put like 
a stupid amount of extra thick pepperoni on it. Oh, okay. I like that. Like there's there's a ton on those things. Like uh, like I did not expect it to be good. I was like, okay, hey, movie yeah. tie-in, whatever. <laughs> I wasn't but, expecting yeah, no. too much out of it either. All right, yeah. Bill, you have a good night. Have a good night, guys. Um, you too. Later, gentlemen. Go, go find food. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.